The U.S. stock market is about to exit correction territory, and guess what? It's the fastest in 10 years. But what's going on behind closed doors with some of the largest Wall Street dark pool transactions? Today, we'll discuss that along with the oil markets and the huge rebound that we saw on Friday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the special weekend edition of the Markets Around the World, where we cover stocks, commodities, and cryptos. Together, we'll talk about the critical resistance points for multiple markets around the world right now, including, could we see an island reversal for the NASDAQ? That would be a huge momentum shift. We'll also discuss oil coming off our most traded zone in number two. Can we see a resurgence in black gold? And more importantly, what will we see happening with the U.S. dollar moving forward? A new low cracks what has been an exceptional trend now for quite a few months. That and more coming up in the special weekend edition. Another round of robust U.S. data is set to arrive next week, raising questions in the financial market about whether the economy can continue to avoid buckling under the weight of the highest interest rates in over two decades. The first revision to fourth quarter gross domestic product is set to be released next Wednesday followed by January's reading on the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge, the Personal Consumption Expenditures, or PCE, price index. The Fed could say this is the new norm for where interest rates should be, he said via phone, referring to the current target for the Fed funds rate of 5.25% to 5.5%. For stocks, that means all the burden is on earnings, which have carried all the water this year. For bonds, it probably means there's some upside risk to longer-term yields. Now that Super Bowl is over and the Kansas City Chiefs have emerged as the winners, many people are predicting a downturn in the stock market. Why? According to the Super Bowl indicator, if the team from the American Football Conference, or AFC, wins the Super Bowl, then the Dow Jones Industrial Average will decline over the coming year. However, there's no conclusive proof that the indicator actually works. The AFC's Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl both this year and in 2023, last year, the Dow gained more than 13%, while the S&P 500, SPX, rose more than 24%. Turning away from entertaining but statistically insignificant market predictors, such as the Super Bowl indicator and many other unconventional ones, there's one indicator that you may want to pay attention to, the cardboard box indicator, which a number of stock market experts consider valuable. This intriguing indicator is based on the premise that a significant volume of goods is shipped in cardboard boxes. Therefore, an increase in the shipment of goods in cardboard boxes suggests a strengthening economy due to increased manufacturing activity. Conversely, a decrease in cardboard box shipments may signal economic slowdown as manufacturing activity declines. It appears that the NASDAQ 100 has faced resistance relative to the Dow on two previous occasions. The question now arises, Will history repeat itself for a third time? Or is this the moment when the NASDAQ 100 finally breaks through and establishes a significant upward trajectory? Another piece of data to consider. The U.S. equity risk premium has plummeted to its lowest level since the aftermath of the dot-com bubble. The equity risk premium signifies the additional compensation investors receive for bearing the extra risk associated with the stock market, as opposed to investing in treasuries. The stock market appears to be deviating from its typical election year cycle, which should have seen it entering a three-month weak spot starting in 2024. Despite this expectation, the market has surged higher instead. This situation underscores the importance of considering all available information, regardless of whether it conforms to expected patterns. Here's an astonishing statistic for you. NVIDIA's market capitalization surged from $1 trillion to $2 trillion in just eight months, less than half the time it took Apple and Microsoft to achieve the same milestone. At this rate, NVIDIA is projected to surpass all other companies and become the largest in the world by the end of 2025. U.S. stocks closed mostly higher on Friday, with both the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 reaching fresh record highs fueled by the ongoing rally of mega-cap chipmaker NVIDIA Corp. Market performance, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 
DJIA, climbed 62.42 points or 0.2%, closing at 39,031. The S&P 500, SPX, edged up 1.77 points or less than 0.1%, achieving an all-time closing high of 5,088. The NASDAQ Composite, COMP, experienced a slight decline of 44.80 points or 0.3%, settling at 15,996. For the week, the Dow gained 1.3%, the S&P 500 rose 1.7%, and the technology-heavy NASDAQ composite advanced 1.4%, according to FactSet data. U.S. stocks ended mostly higher on Friday, with the S&P 500 securing a weekly gain, largely attributed to NVIDIA Corp. It's outstanding earnings results announced after Wednesday's closing bell. Matt Stuckey, Chief Equity Portfolio Manager at Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Co., described NVIDIA's latest quarterly earnings as exceeding expectations, stating that the chipmaker lived up to the hype and then some. Stuckey emphasized the insatiable demand for NVIDIA's artificial intelligence chips, noting that the recent surge in the company's stock price has provided a boost to the overall market sentiment. NVIDIA's shares closed with a 0.4% gain on Friday, reaching a record high following a remarkable 16.4% surge on Thursday as investors celebrated the company's strong quarterly earnings. Final S&P 500 stocks, weekly heat map. We began with NVIDIA Corporation, NVDA, PSA 8.5%, and next company, Micron Technology, MU, PSA 5.3%. Next one is Applied Materials, Inc., AMAT, PSA 5.1%, and the one and only Walmart, WMT, PSA 3.7%. Next one is Most Hated Bank, Wells Fargo & Company, WFC, PSA 3.5%, and Amazon.com, AMZN. But 3.1% last, but not at least the Home Depot, HD. For 3% that all for the top gainers. Let's see what we have for top losers. And we began with Palo Alto Networks, Pan W, 23.1%. And next one is Booking Holdings, BKNJ, 6.5%. Adobe Inc., ADBE, 6.3%. My favorite Tesla, TSLA, 4.2%. And the Walt Disney Company, DIS, 4.2%. And also I forgot to mention the Blackstone Group, BX, 4%. And the last one is Uber. Technologies, Uber, 3.9%. Here's an update on the Magnificent 7 tech stocks performance so far this year. Top gainers, NVIDIA is up 59.1% and Meta, up 36.8%. Amazon, up 15.2%. And Microsoft, up 9.1%. Last one is Alphabet, up 3.1%. Top losers for the Magnificent 7 is Apple, down 5.2%. And Tesla, down 22.7%. And here are the most notable earnings that I'm going to watch. If you want, you can take a picture so you can use it. Let's do some chart, and we began with the SPX weekly chart, which reveals a situation of weekly strength, masked by bearish signals. Could a pullback be incoming? Despite the appearance of a bullish weekly candle, the bearish signal from the rate of change, ROC, indicator persists, accompanied by an overbought relative strength index, RSI. Considering these factors alongside signals from the daily chart, it suggests a potential pullback towards the weekly 10-period moving average, 10 May, in the near future. Such a pullback could serve as a healthy correction for the overall market, potentially paving the way for a more sustainable bull run. It's noteworthy that price encountered rejection at 51.10, a level akin to the annual resistance seen at 4607 which previously acted as a barrier during the rally in July 2023. Therefore, exercising caution regarding a possible pullback is advisable. Now let's delve into the QQQ 4-hour chart. If the price remains above 436, it suggests a bullish outlook for the QQQ. However, I anticipate that this week the QQQ may aim to fill the gap, with a downside target around 425. Next chart is Google. Google closed the week at 143.96. We're waiting to see what happens between the 143.5 and 144. Price range. If price breaks above 144 with strength, we're setting our take profit level to 145.50. If price can't hold the 143.25 area, we're taking profit at 141.25. Amazon closed the week at $175. Throughout the week, we observed a notable resistance level at $175. Should the price demonstrate strength and break above this level, we'll consider taking profit at 177.25. Conversely, if we witness a rejection at the 175 level, followed by a break below 174 dollars, 
our profit-taking target will be set at 170 75s. AMZN experienced a significant uptick this week following the news of its inclusion in the Dow Jones, replacing Walgreens. The question now is whether this will trigger a buy the rumor, sell the news scenario. Alternatively, the placement in the Dow Jones could lead to further price appreciation. Next chart is Tesla. Tesla closed the week at 191.91. We're waiting to see what happens at the 194 resistance area. If we can break above this with strength, we'll take profits at 198. This is the next resistance. If we reject 194, we'll take profit at the 190 support level. Let's examine the BTC chart. Bitcoin appears to be running out of momentum, but I believe there is still potential for upside, possibly reaching the $60,000 level again. However, if the bullish momentum fades, we might see a pullback to around $48,000. Let's see what key events we have for this week. On Monday, we have new home sales. On Tuesday, CB Consumer Confidence and Durable Goods Orders on Tuesday.USQ4 GDP. On Wednesday and Salesforce CRM earnings. So core PCE inflation data on Thursday and initial jobless claims and pending home sales and Best Buy. BBY earnings all on Thursday. And the last data is ISM Manufacturing, PMI on Friday. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you for watching. If you find a value on the video, Please like and subscribe. I will see you guys later. Bye for now.